Hello everyone and welcome to Lawrence Place Factorio Space Explorations with Crestorio 2 where I present you with that most mundane of problems, a train jam. So yes, sometime between the uh, around the end of the last uh, stream ending, the train seemed to have just got a bit confused and things have got a little bit weird. And unfortunately, there, there's a lot of them. It, it basically, it's jammed all the way from about here, all the way back through here, right down to here. And it's just all... It, let's just say it's not not going great because none of these trains can go where they want to go. Everything is just a little bit confused and a little bit sad. So I've had a bit of a look at this, trying to work out what has, what has caused all of this. And it looks like, well, this train is definitely the one that's at the front of the queue, and is the one that's currently having a bit of an, a bit of a, uh, a bit of a moment. And it seems to be this train's wanting to go around to here, but this station seems to be full. And there's an sort of inverted commas by full there, because what it basically means is this train, this station has stopped accepting trains, and for some reason, this train has decided to stop part way into this stacker. So rather than pulling up to the signal and then doing the recalculating and then going, oh actually I don't know where to go, and which would mean that all these other ones could then come in and stack up across here, it's decided to stop here. And unfortunately this is going to be this is going to be a completely blocking problem because we're not going to unload any uh, any copper ore out of here because these are watching the chest over here, the, the warehouse over here and going, oh that's that's full up to the level we want it to be full to to turn this off. And so these are all going to be turned off, so we're not going to get any copper flowing out of here. So this this station is never going to activate. And uh, we are dribbling copper through here, interestingly, but that's what's that's the copper that's coming in from the uh, from the feed up from the core mining drill. So that's sort of expected. We've still got a dribble of that coming through. So that means, if anything, this is just getting fuller, which means we're never going to, and we, we can't get a train into there, into here, to pick up some copper plates because, well, they're all being blocked by this one. So this is well, basically, we, we are doomed at this point. The uh, the the, uh, the system isn't going to self self correct. I pretty much have to come along here and go to is it this one? Low priority, yes. If I if I uh, undo that and set that to one. Then there we go. The train starts to move again. Uh, let's let's unset that again because that's not how this is supposed to work, really. But that will allow this train to pull into here. It'll unload happily, and then this one will come around here and and load up. And you see, as you can see, the train, all the trains now start to move again. The blockage is cleared. Um, it'll take a little while for them all to filter through and for everything to return to normal. But in theory, that has sorted everything out. Now that's very much a temporary fix because it's not caused. It's not fixed the underlying problems, which appears to be just too much copper, really, which is a strange problem to have, but uh, one I'm very happy to have. And I think we'll leave this to the experts in the uh, in the next run to, to try and sort that one out. Um, and by experts, I mean either Tristan because he's our train guru, or possibly Mark because Mark is the person who's been spending all his time on Norvis. So moving on to that, we are. I'm starting for a change. I'm going to start by talking about what's been happening on Norvis because that is the centre of the universe as far as we're concerned. It's where the main part of the uh, the base it sits and where all of the useful stuff comes from. So the most exciting thing I think is to start off with. Let's and let's follow this this train through. Is uh, if you if you pardon the completely accidental pun actually is so mark has been building some more uh, uranium mines because we had one and it ran out and now we've decided to start using it for a few things it's being used for science and what i'm going to get onto in a moment so we've got a load of uranium being pulled through here we've got a decent amount in these in these warehouses and that's this is probably why the and that that train jam i was pointing to is probably why we don't have a train up here loading up from it so yes, that'll be picked up from there as you'd expect. Taken down here where it's being coverexed. I showed you this last time. So we are over here. We are producing um, the 238 and the 235, alternatively dull and spicy uraniums. And then the and so Tristan has added in a, a thing on the yeah here we go spicy uranium drop. So calling it spicy uranium seems to have um, caught on quite nicely, which is a thing, but it's not it's not a sufficient thing because as you can see we don't have any available. But eventually. This will flow onto here, run around here, and get on. And it's now being put onto the bus. And the reason it's being put onto the bus is because we. Ooh, what's, this is a very long belt. It's probably going to have. Yes, it's got loads of uranium down at the end of it that's just being not used at the moment. However, some of that will be pumped into the rocket probably at some point. So that's not. It's not 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 wasted. It just it just needs to be brought along here and put into the rocket. But that's that's for another time. Um, at the moment, it's going along uh, here and then going up this belt along with the rocket control modules because Mark has decided it's time to step up our uh, our weaponry situation. So he started making these, which are these are the heavy rocket launchers, I believe. Uh, yes, heavy rocket launchers, which with which you can you can fire heavy rockets if you want, or much more excitingly, you can fire atomic bombs. So these are going to be 
phenomenally effective and these are going to be incredibly useful for clearing out basically all of the all, all of the biters that I've, I've got causing me issues out on uh, Talos or Talos which I shall talk about tomorrow so I'm afraid you'll have to wait until then but he's making atomic bombs here and then this continues as you see goes all the way up here because round here he's starting to make atomic artillery shells as well so we've got the area along here that's making tank shells which are then being made into artillery shells put onto the belt flowing up here being combined with all of the other things so the uranium steel and rocket control modules in order to make uh, nuclear artillery shells now these sound incredibly dangerous to me um, I don't know how big the explosion is going to be but the reason they sound dangerous is because artillery auto fires uh, that's probably not going to be an issue with artillery specifically because it will only auto fire at nests however if you have a nest that's a little bit close to a wall um, that one's probably fine they'd have to be they'd have to be pretty close this one's also probably fine but yeah the, the, the could be you, you have a little bit of a dangerous splash, splash damage but I think given that in in uh, Crastorio I think it's Crastorio as opposed to space exploration they've done funny things with the uh, nuclear with the um, um, ra range of these things so if we take this um, if we turn on actually I don't want that just yet if I turn on turret range so you can just about make out here and I'll highlight I'll highlight this on the on the output video so I, I better not move because I'll make it really hard but the range of the artillery this is the artillery train here the range of it goes from about here to about here which isn't huge um, for as far as artillery goes if I then take but if I then take out the targeting remote then it goes all the way out to right up here so here versus here that's a huge difference, um, and so when you when you're using the artillery manually, it's absolutely phenomenal. You can blow things up from blooming miles away, and so I think that's going to be what Mark is probably going to be doing with it, and therefore it's going to be a lot safer. Well, a bit safer. Now, if we look over here, we can see this is where the uh, the nuclear artillery shells are being brought up. So they're made here, brought up this uh, this belt along here, and then eventually, in theory, they will be loaded into the artillery train. At the moment, the artillery train is just completely full of normal artillery shells because we haven't made anything like enough of these yet for it to be for to do anything anything useful with them there's I, I don't know how many let's let's have a quick look so there are we've made 48 so far and then we ran out of uranium so that's why probably why mark is being uh, going off and make it dig, making more more uranium mines therefore we can dig up more uranium we can put we can um uh, process it into the various types of uranium and then we can cook up the hot the uh, dull uranium into more hot uranium in the Kovarex system which I talked about last week and as you can see now all of these have filled up so each time one of these runs and, and completes it will spit out an additional um, hot uranium that can come around here go down and go into the, into the system over here so it's still gonna take quite a long time to fill these traits fill these wagons up but we do have a steady albeit rather slow supply coming in Mark says he's fixed the iron ore balancer. That was the thing I was talking about last week up here. Yes, where this this wasn't this wasn't unloading properly. Has how, which way has he done it? Because because chat had lots of suggestions for the best way to do it. Okay, so he's um he set set it to iron ore is let is greater than um I. I assume that's an I, not an L. Yeah, it must be. I think they're all capital letters. And I is the, is the number you get if you divide all the total across here by four. So whichever one has got the most in will unload into here. That means it's a specific thing, as in it's, it has to be iron ore. But meh, who cares? It it it'll it'll work. Um yes. And that, but that does require multiple colours of cable. So as you can see, we've got a green cable coming from here to here, and then a red cable going from here to here. Um, and never must the two cross. So hence the green cable from here to here, and then the red cable. So the red cable goes to everything, but each group of the green cables go from each uh, warehouse to their own own belt, and that keeps the, that keeps those the, the number of iron in these that it's comparing against separate, uh, so they don't all get added up and total together. He's tweaked some oil requests as he's removed old old iron mines and put in new ones. So there's there's more mines springing up around the around the base. I wouldn't like to say where. Uh, there's some stone ones over there, but they were there before. There's a uranium mine. There's another uranium mine. So there's a couple of those in there. He says he's put in iron mines. I, I fully believe him. Um, possibly that one. Probably that one. I don't re remember that one being there, but my memory isn't great, so who knows? But yes, he says he's put those in, and I, I as I say, I fully fully believe him. Um, he's oh he's upgraded heat, uh, heat shield town, which is down here. Up here, here. Um, yeah, so all of these have been upgraded to assembly machine Mark III. So this is now a, a quicker system. It's exactly the same as before, um, and that's now back backed up. So apparently upgrading it worked. So well done there. Um, 
And oh yes, he's, he's linked up some new uh, new core seams. So there was there's there's four core seams up here that have all now been added into the uh, added into the system. So we can now scoop all of that up and, and and collect it nicely. So yes, that's that's keeping us in with lots of with suitable levels of supply of all of the things we need in, around the, around the rest of the uh, the solar system. Because as you remember, all the rest of us have escaped off to um, other planets in order to do completely different things. Somebody's trains run out of fuel, and it's mine. Okay, we'll worry about that next week. Uh, no, the week after, because next week is Christmas. Um, he's also put in some additional... Um, so, so we talked about these guns last week. I think he's put in some more as well. I think there's one down in the plastic area. Are you plastic? You're plastic. Yes, here we go. So we can also we can also fire out plastic to uh, to remote places that need it, and hopefully sulphur as well, because I'm going to need some of that next time for for reasons I shall get onto later. No, he hasn't he hasn't done sulphur yet, but um, but I think he probably will be when I ask for it. <laughs> uh, it'll, it'll keep him busy. Um, mall belts have been upgraded to blue. Tip in, in a lot of cases. That's I mean, it's not necessary, but just upgrade. Well, no, they haven't. <laughs> um, oh wait. Well, Oh, from train to beginning of that belt. Okay, so all, so well, yeah, all of these bits have been upgraded to blue belts, just so we can make sure we've got plenty along here, and it's all going to keep up and be happy, 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 happy. Okay, so that seems to have covered most of Mark's done list, or at least all, all the sort of the all the things that struck me as significant, and some of the ones that didn't as well, to be honest. Um, he's also been talking about things to do next time. One of which is to sort of continue to expand the steel production up here. So this clearly he had better things to do, like um, atomic bombs, which is far more exciting. I, I, I'm, I'm sure you'll agree. So this this steel uh, area up here hasn't been uh, improved yet, but he's talking about perhaps redesigning this to put beacons in it, which to be honest seems like a very good idea because if we, as, as I was saying last week, if we if we do beacon all of this up, then we can get rid of these speed modules stick in extra productivity modules and potentially upgrade to tier 3 productivity modules which we ha don't have very many of um, and use those to get to basically to get the most and then use the beacons to get the most out of those productivity modules so yes that's definitely going to be worth doing um, he also wants more stone mines which seems fair um, and uranium fuel cells and uranium trains, and to continue to supply the off-world cannon systems as required. So yes, that'll be the that'll be the sulphur I was talking about. Tristan, as I said, messed around on Norvis a little bit by putting the um, uranium onto the bus, and he says he's he's, he's tweaked the, the uh, display over here that tells us how much stuff we've got, but it's not there's no visible differences to it. So he's only been just going in there and doing little bits of tweaking and stuff like that. And that covers Norvis. So that's the uh, that's that's what we've been up to down there. Now the next place I'm going to show you is uh, Taishakuten because that's also quite close to Norvis. I mean, if we if we look at the map here, we've gone from Norvis, we've then gone out to Taishakuten, which is still in the same same orbit, so it's pretty close. It is. I mean, just, these mo these maps are slightly odd, but this means these three are moons of Norvis. So yeah. So on Taishakuten, I I went in and I did some, I did some fixes here because. It, it had all jammed up completely, and it turned out the reason it jammed up, which is a bit silly, is because this delivery cannon was turned off here, so it wasn't lobbing off the um, the, the rare metals off to uh, Norvis, so it just it just wasn't working. So now we've got this warehouse here is still storing loads and loads of rare metals, but we've managed to get rid of some of it. So that's that's the amount we've churned through um, since whichever point in the last stream I, I uh, realised this was a problem. Um, we've got this here, cooking them up as as fast as we can, ish. Um, Okay, there we go. Yes, it's cooking them up, and then presumably, oh, we're passing. Ah, okay. This is only passing them through this way when there is uh, more than twenty thousand in here. So that's why this is holding at about nineteen, twenty thousand, because as it, because this will only pass it through into here to keep this not quite full, because we do need a little bit of this rare metal um, up way, way, way up here for the imasite processing. Uh, this step requires rare metal, so I want to keep a supply of it available there, just in case we ever do get any more imasite dropped in here. And you never know, that might happen, because we're starting to use cryonite in a few places now, and there's those systems out on Drakit where if there are any spare delivery cannon capsules, they'll be used to ship um, cryonite out here. No, they'll be used to ship imasite out here, so we can start processing it, but those, uh, can those delivery cannon capsules won't be generated unless we're shipping out uh, cryonite in order to create the core fragments to create delivery cannon capsules and so on and so on so yes this is all depend this this imasite supply here is entirely dependent on our production of cryonite or i no not on our production our use of cryonite which is kind of silly but oh well never mind we'll probably get it shipped we may get it shipped in from somewhere else some, at some point in the future like um there, there we have we have one of our planets this one here taras is an imasite planet so there's low going to be loads and loads of it available there so we might start shipping it from there to um to Taishakuten because we need something to um, 
throws to the wrong planet. So we might start shipping it from there to Taishikuten um, because we need a supply. Ideally, we want to have a supply of that coming in here so that we carry on making ridiculous quantities of sulfur that we can then just ship down here because at the moment we've had to start making it from oil, which is, seems like it seems a little bit wasteful. However, cleaning that out has meant that the um, this system now is now starting to flow again. We are producing delivery cannons at a suitably at a, at a sufficient rate, and more importantly, that means that if this is running and taking up the uh, the core fragments, that means this can run and produce the vulcanite out here, which then comes through here, gets processed down into the vulcanite cubes, and we can then ship those out. So our smelting and other sort of similar processes that require massive quantities of vulcanite are now going to start working a bit more. Uh, again, start working again nicely. So that's. Of, I'm a fan of having things working properly. <laughs> Speaking of working properly, I also fixed the uh, pipe, pipe work down here because a lot of these ducts weren't linked up properly. And Are they still? Okay, this is all backed up now because... I don't know why this is all backed up and, and stopped, stopped working. Um, there's maybe, some, maybe we just don't need enough power for these to be actually running. Oh, there's no oxygen, then no steam. Okay, we ran out of, <laughs> I ran out of um, atmospheric condensers when I was building this, and somehow didn't realise when we we're shipping more stuff out. Or maybe we have no, we probably have realised we just haven't shipped it out here yet. So, yeah, that would be working, except there's no atmospheric condensers down here. Never mind, because we do actually have slightly more power than we need. Only slightly more, actually. That's a little bit concerning. Uh, if we look back over the long distance, nah, it seems to be okay. It does go up and down as um, as the drills kick in and out. This should always be running, but we had those problems with it jamming up, as we discussed earlier. Um, but it does always seem to be in the acceptable um, range. So yes, Taishikuten has had lots of exciting stuff. Well, no, it hasn't. It hasn't had lots of exciting stuff going on on it. It's had a couple of minor fixes put in, and then it's been mostly ignored because it isn't broken. So, you know, why, why would we fix it if it's not broken? What has had a bit more going on is the planet of Njord, and this is where Tristan has been spending nearly all his time recently. He's been out here now for three streams, I think, because the Holmium recipe is phenomenally complicated. Um, I'll show you the diagram here. You can see um, you can see why he's why he's uh, it's take, why it's taking him a while, should we say? There's a lot of steps here. However, he's very very nearly there. It is mostly working with a couple of minor issues. We talked about this last week, and I skimmed over what, how it was working, but at that point it wasn't actually finished, so it was a lot of, well, this is the theory, but nothing's really going on here. So let's have a look at it in a little bit more detail now. So he's managed to make some, um, he's managed to make some delivery cannon capsules, which is a good start. It's not quite a sufficient, it's not sufficient because there's no holmium coming through, but it's a good start nonetheless. Well done there. Um, so over here we've got the holm holmium core fragments coming in from the mining, from the mines, as 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 you're used to. You've you've seen this in loads of other places. In this particular case, he's I was going to say he's used trains. He hasn't. He's got a really long belt coming up from this drill down here, but he has quite a large train setup going on here that may well in the future be used for um, for bringing holmium core chunks in. We sh we shall see. Um, in fact, I'll have a look. In fact, let's have a look at, look at look at this. Not not yet, but at some point I suspect. So what's what's he doing with all of the uh, all these core chunks? Well, they're they're coming in up here up the belt as as, as I showed you. They're being uh, pulverized down over here into into holmium and stone and core chunks as is traditional. All all of the core chunks are processed in basically the same way. When you you, you pulverize them down and you, you pulverize the exotic core chunk down and then you get normal core fragments. You get the resource from that planet and you get stone. Most of it is the resource for that planet, which is quite nice because we want lots of this stuff. The, uh, the stone gets taken away to be used for appropriate stone-related purposes. The uh, core chunks get taken away to be turned into delivery cannon capsules, and the holmium. Well, the holmium we have to crunch down into the into the into this stuff, and then it's brought down here where it's mixed in in these machines to be turned into um, crushed holm. Holmium chloride, there we go, and this requires a bajillion different inputs, so he's got these um, anion beads, or onion beads as we seem to have started calling them, and those are being made over here, and those are difficult, because those require inputs of cryonite and plastic, which is, actually that's not, that's the easy part, because cryonite is just brought in from Drakit, where it's being made in, in suitably large quantities by another, by a system very similar to the um, vulcanite one I just showed you. Um, plastic again, comes. plastic just comes from Norvis, so again, pretty straightforward. Then he needs nitric acid as well, and that makes these beads, which is great. So they're 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 flowing around, and they're being they're being used they're being used up here in the processing to to produce the uh, holmium chloride. But unfortunately, we seem to we have too much um, dirty holmium water. That seems to be that seems. Oh no, there's no there's no crushed holmite coming. 
No, there's no crushed holmonite coming in because it's full of, uh, of dirty holmium water that it hasn't been able to get rid of. So yeah, that, this this these pipes presumably yeah these pipes are completely full. Need to get rid of that. But then once that starts flowing, we can bring that out down here. We can be putting it in with the in the copper down here and making the making the uh, holmium powder. Then we cook that down here with vulcanite uh, if it's available or without vulcanite if it's not. Presumably the not vulcanite requires sand as well. I'm guessing. Uh, oh sorry, it requires coal and sand, and the vulcanite one requ just. Requ Oh no, it doesn't require sand at all. This belt just comes up here out of. Um... Oh, because then it's needed. Then you need the sand for the molten holmium to to ingots recipe. There we go. That's that. I I knew it was needed in there somewhere. Um, yeah, so that's all being done here, and then eventually we get a supply of ingots coming off over this way. Uh, they go over to the delivery cannons. So great. Um, the problem is, it seems to be the the heavy the dirty holmium water as we saw, which is coming over to up here. And then, ah, there's a prioritization problem here because all of the beads are coming along. Well, what? Okay, the beads are being no, the beads are being passed around because they're a, yeah, the beads are being passed around because they're a a thing that's used and reused. Sometimes they get spat out back out again. Sometimes they don't. Um, everything else is then being filtered out and dealt with along here. However, this system doesn't have doesn't allow for the overflow of beads and therefore it's jammed up by the looks of it. So, yeah, that's not going to be hopefully not going to be too painful to clean up and, and get working again but at the moment it's it's causing issues we've got we've got two more beads than we know what to do with so yeah that'll that'll need to be fixed there's a prioritization problem along here basically it's just not working oh i see why it's not working yes it's because all of these are putting out onto the outside of the belt because that's what inserters do by default so they're coming around here on the outside or the bot now the bottom side of the belt they're coming through here they're getting prioritized sure but these ones are coming up on both sides of the belt so they're going. Th so this is filling up the top side of the belt, and inserters will always take from the near side of the belt if they can because they're lazy. So that means that these machines have all been running off the the, ex the additional um, uh, anion beads that have been brought up in the main supply here, rather than recycling them. So if we put if we put a belt in there like that, that might actually unjam it. We shall see. Um, it's not the most elegant of solutions. But it might just work. It it's going to take a little. It's going to take a little while for it to sort of all all run through and get rid of the um, get rid of the backlog. But eventually, I think this will probably clean it out because we've got we've managed to get a few to flow along. Well, a few to flow along the top of here, which has created enough space for these machines to output, and so they're starting to run. And as you can see, this belt is now getting shorter, quite relatively quickly. And as the um, and as these and, and as it gets pulled through here, you occasionally get little bursts of speed as the uh, as the whole crushed holmium drops back onto this belt to be taken away and re-added into the supply over here. So this, yes, I think this 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 has now fixed it. Um, it just needs to just needs to be left to run for a little while. So Tristan will quite like that. I think he likes fixes that can be done remotely with just adding, making very very small changes like that. Um, and this means everything else is now kicked back into into action. So we've got the. Um, got machines over here making uh, oh making hydrogen and chlorine to make hydrogen chloride acid for uh, yeah, steps there's, there's there's a lot in this this is this is a complicated process I, I, I showed you the comparison between this and the uh, 0.5 uh, vanilla space exploration holmium recipe last week but I'll show you again because it is quite quite shocking <laughs> so yeah no wonder this has been taking it there's no wonder this has taken him three weeks to get up and running but we did get a delivery of holmium um, ingots uh, passed through and, and through one of these um, one of these uh, guns over here. So if we now take a look in Norvis orbit, we'll find that this is this is where it went to in here. Dropped into this chest, was passed down in, into in here, rattled down through these all through all the way through these, and then was passed out down here on this belt, which takes the holmium all the way along here. <clears throat> and at the moment, the only thing it's used for is is here, where it's passed up here. Went into this machine, which has now made uh, it's 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 run it's it's run 50 times apparently. So yeah, we got 50 ingots across. So that meant we made 50 times since so we made 500 holmium plates, which isn't bad. Um, most of those are now sitting on this belt here, which is um, good actually. That's where we that is where we want them. Um, However, we also want some of them on here. So this allows us to start making the actually making the science packs longer. So you'll see now this one that required the holmium to run has now has now got run 179 times. Blimey, that's that's a lot. Um, that's a lot more than I was expecting actually. So we've made 179 of these cards. It's filled up this belt nicely as you can see. We've got loads of the lightning cards. Those then came over here, and then these machines should. I'm not sure, I'm not sure why these aren't running actually. Let's let's have a quick look. So you, oh you are waiting for lightning. Cards. Oh no, it's full of energy catalogs, which hasn't been able to get rid of. So those should be passed into here, which is run out, which is out of significant data. Okay. 
Um, significant data comes from here, and over here we have. Oh, we have too many. Oh, I've not been getting rid of the of the, of the uh, un, un, now no longer needed data cards. That's that's a, uh, a mistake. So if I take that and put one of those in there, in a moment or two, a robot will fly over. Put that there. Oh wait, hang on. No. That will need to actually be a white inserter because we need to filter. Because otherwise, otherwise we're going to be putting the other things. So the the uh, the energy we're going to be putting the um, energy simu oh, sorry no the significant data would be dumped out onto this belt as well, and that would be bad. We don't want to do that. So we'll uh, we'll unload that onto here, um, and that can be then be passed back. Okay, so we're then going to be trying to pass that round here and try and make it into these data cards as well again. Uh, we shall see. Oh, that's not, that's never going to work. This is just going to back up very, very quickly. So I'm going to need to do some cu some cunning shenaniganry round here to um, to get this to 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 uh, to, uh, to to actually be used up. Actually, they no, they no, they won't. Be, yes, they they will. Yeah, okay, they'll be used by this one, but not by this one. So I need to improve that probably by having this output onto both sides of the belt. Um, we'll worry about that next time. But basically, if I come over here for now. I can demonstrate this is the basic theory. We put the blank data cards out onto here like that. We'll get rid of those. This jams up immediately because we're not using any of this. But then this, in theory, should now be able to work. Yeah, okay. It's still too full of these. All right. We'll we'll worry about this and we'll worry about this next in the next stream because this still isn't working. But that but I that that is at least the problem. If I, if I, if I, actually if I do that, then it'll put them down on the near side. Uh, then we can un then we can unload it completely. This now starts to run again. It's going to be okay until this backs up to here, which is going to happen fairly soon. But at least now we're getting rid of the um, the cards in both directions, and hopefully we'll start to use some of them up. Um, this, as I've said many times, this whole area around here is very, very temporary, and will be moved away soon, so, as uh, soon as we can, uh, and rebuilt in a less disgusting way. So, um, yeah, don't don't tell me that this is an awful, awful build because I'm fully aware of that. <laughs> However, the point is that what this this awful awful build has allowed us before this before this filled up and jammed has allowed us to make uh, four well run four times to make uh, science packs, which means we've made a total of eight science packs. Those dropped onto a belt here, passed all the way up the belt over to the science labs over here, and so we've now been able well we've put them through, and that means we've actually been able to do one of the slightly more advanced researches. We've been able to do holmium cables. We've done Holmium Cable because that is a prereq of Space Railways. So now Space Railways are available. We need 50, um, 50 sci uh, Energy Science Pack 1s in order to do it. But that's only 25 builds. We've got a load of the parts we need for this now. I think this is probably going to be achievable. Probably probably even in the next stream. Um, and that's slightly awkward because that means... In order to sort of keep progressing, that kind of means somebody's going to need to come back to the space station and start rebuilding it in a... Um, uh, in a space train compatible way, um, I say I say awkward. It's not it's not a problem as such. It's something we definitely want to do. But we're kind of all off in different places at the moment, all busy doing things. So I don't know who's going to be doing that. I suspect there's a fairly high chance it'll be me because a lot of the space station stuff has been so far. But I'm kind of busy with something else, which you'll um, you'll see in tomorrow's video. So I don't know. I wouldn't like to say for sure whether it'll be me who comes out and does this. We'll have to see uh, in the next stream when when uh, somebody somebody becomes free and heads out to deal with this. But that is something for next time. So, thank you for watching. I hope you've enjoyed the uh, video. If you have, please make sure you subscribe to the channel. It would, uh, mean, means a lot to me. It would be most most appreciated. And um, well, yes. So next time, what's going? What's happening next? Well, we're taking the uh, the twenty sixth off because it's Boxing Day. So there won't be a stream on Monday. However, we will we will be doing a stream on the second. Um, so that that'll that'll be the next stream. Normal standard Monday stream. Normal t normal time, seven thirty p.m. UK time. Um, I shall. I shall be trying to get a stream in on Wednesday the 28th when I should be um, well it depends I may be playing Dyson Sphere program I may have finished it by then we shall see so but there will if, assuming I'm available there will be a stream then so uh, watch the YouTube notifications and you'll see when it um, when it pops up if there's something, something happening then and I'll try and get some more videos out over the Christmas period as well um, we shall see what happens there's um, I've got lots of stuff in the pipeline but nothing that's quite as close to finished as I would like it to be <laughs> so Yes, I hope you've uh, so I hope you've enjoyed the video. Thank you very much for watching, as always. And until next time, please uh, check out the channel sponsor. That's Treefoil.be. Use the code Lawrence Place to get twenty percent off your uh, hosting services. And I'll see you in the next video. Thanks for watching. See you then.